and I'll be discussing about uh, the state and the future of progressive web apps as a platform. Um, that's why I, we keep on reiterating as a platform because um, there are already many um, front-end frameworks that um, discusses on how to make uh, progressive web apps. We have um, Angular, we have uh, React, we have Vue. So if you really wanted to deep down, uh, to deep, to learn deeper about these front-end technologies, uh, we have them as well. But we, I guess we're going to have meetups with uh, partnering with them in the future, so stay tuned with that. So let's look at the past year for progressive web apps. Oh, wait. Um, first, let's have a repro uh, retrospective on the word progressive. I mean, why do we even call PWAs or progressive web apps as progressive? I mean, why can't we just call them as web apps? First is, we define the word progress. So progress means to move forward or um, onward towards a certain destination. As uh, the one who coined the term PWA said, Mr. Uh, Alex Russell, um, he said in the blog post explaining on why he named progressive web apps as is that um, these apps aren't packaged and deployed through stores. They're just websites that took all the right vitamins. Um, they keep the web's ask when you need it permission model and add in new capabilities like being top level in your task switcher, on your home screen, and in your notification tray. Users don't have to make a heavyweight choice up front and don't implicitly sign up for something dangerous just by clicking on a link. Sites that want to send you notification or be on your home screen have to earn that right over time as you use them more and more. They progressively become apps. Food for thought. That's why they are called progressive web apps. Because um, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because of progression. So I'm going to tell you like the, 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 the steps of progressive web apps on why is it progressive. So first is that it's just a site that you open in your browser. It's in a tab. So it doesn't have that superpowers like um, being in your home screen immediately, but it already has those other features that you need already like um, being responsive when you um, make it larger or smaller and stuff. So as you use it frequently, let's say um, that web app is important to you. Now, now that's the time when it tells you that, do you want to keep me? That's the only time that you have to decide. Then after that, when you really decided that you really want it, that's the only time that it could be at your home screen and blend along with your other um, used apps that you always see on your um, launcher. Um, yeah, and additionally, it also works offline, but it works offline from the very beginning. But um, because of that added feature, like there's no more tab, um, it's on your home screen. It feels more like an app or uh, the happiness of the web app. So that's what he, that's what Alex Russell had also uh, said. That's why it's a progression. So for example, this is one of the projects I've built before. So this is Project Trend. Okay, so, so first, no, you discover your web, uh, progressive web app. You just scan it and use it immediately as you wish. Okay, I'm gonna use it immediately. So from there, you use it the first time, then you find it valuable. It's like, okay, it's gonna help me daily in my commutes. That's when the time you can now add it to your home screen, you can install it. So that's what he refers to as the progression. That's why it's called as a progressive web app. So, yeah. So there you go. Um, let's say you installed it. So for the succeeding uses, 
it's already in your launcher. So when you open it, it feels like an app, not like a website that is on a tab. And it also has like what they said, no, being able to be at a task a switcher, for example. So the debate between hybrid versus progressive apps, it's like what um, Fran said earlier, like building hybrid apps. So with hybrid, we utilize web technologies to create app experiences. So like you're still using HTML, CSS, JavaScript to create um, app experiences. And the good thing about it is that it still can feel like an app because it's like packaged into what you typically know, that what you download at the, the Play Store or the App Store. But one of its cons is that it loses one of the best qualities of the web, which is being able to link and be able to transparently see if the site is secure. And also, it's locked down on um, specific platforms. And also, your distribution platform is limited to um, what the vendors offer, like uh, just on the Play Store and on the App Store. But with progressive apps, um, they just start as your typical websites or your web apps, but they turn as apps in the process. Kung parang, jowa muna bago kasal, ganun. Tignan mo muna kung okay ba. Hindi pwedeng kasal agad, di ba? Tignan mo muna, baka hindi okay, baka hindi mo gusto. Parang ganun, something like that. So, what one of its pros is that no install requirement. Parang walang masyadong commitment, ganun. And it's also accessible via the browser. But one of its cons, though, is that nga, because some people are already well, they well known the stores, the ba? Like, say, oh, just download it and it's already there. So yun nga, it's not there. But, um, and also, you know, some vendors like Apple doesn't like the idea of this. But the good thing about this is that you could distribute it practically anywhere, just using the URL or the QR code. So some of the hybrid technologies that um, you know or may have heard of are, are here, like uh, Adobe Air applications, your Windows Store apps, your um, Firefox OS when it was still alive, package apps, your Cordova or your pa um, PhoneGap apps, and Electron and more. So hybrid development in the years, uh, in the recent years. No, so the, um, the definition of that of the PWA was five years ago. So like as the year progresses, people are actually looking into what if we turn that PWA into a hybrid like app. So there's kinda doing it. So some of the examples are like PWA is wrapped in hybrid tech, like um, Electron, <coughs> sorry, Electron that has uh, PWAs inside, or, <coughs> sorry, or like this one. Um, if you ever get to download Twitter from the Microsoft Store, what you're getting is a PWA that is just wrapped on a universal Windows platform app. And also, another way is to use either WebView, if you're familiar with that, or you use a trusted web activity, which is a newer and safer approach in wrapping your PWAs into an app that you could distribute to the store. Um, an example of this is the uh, Google Maps Go, which is uh, their lightweight counterpart to the, to, the, to the regular Google Maps. There's like what I've said earlier. And just today, Instagram updated their Windows Windows app. No, instead of using their old one, they're now using PWA. So if you ever get to update your Instagram app on your uh, on your PC, it's a PWA. So now we're going to talk about the capability of PWAs. So aside from what was said earlier about Project Fugu APIs, no? Um, one of the other APIs available is the, like the payment request API, which is like an interface where 
the credit card info or other payment integrators are already um, provided by, by the browser instead of you creating forms for getting card details. So that's one of the capabilities that you could use today in your PWAs. Um, and for other specific iOS updates for PWAs, you may scan this QR code, but um, basically it's the same with Android except that they are reluctant in adding some of the standards. Adoption of progressive web apps. So as I've shown you earlier, um, countries around the world have their, what do you call this, representatives. Like let's say in, um, uh, in the US we have Twitter, CNET, um, in Canada and stuff, we have Pinterest and Lyft. Here at, let's say, in other continents, we have Trivago and more, but none here in the Philippines. So this is not worrying, but rather this is an opportunity for you to explore. So you could take the leap and build PWAs. No? So in terms of uh, the international, we have twitter.com, just like what I've said earlier, like if I ask you if you're using twitter.com. So um, if you visit twitter.com, it works offline, you can install it. So if you don't want the, the heavy client, the heavy native client, no, you can just um, install this PWA and have a lighter um, alternative. And another is Instagram, just like what I've said earlier that it's a PWA. So if you don't want to install Instagram, you could install that instead. And also Tinder. Uh, who uses Tinder? <laughs> oh. Okay, so if you're using t um, Tinder and doesn't want to, you know, um, install the heavy client, you could um, install this instead. And it performs as the similar as that of the native counterpart. How about in the Philippines? No, as I've said, na parang wala pa representative, but actually there are some that uh, have that is starting to go towards the PWE route. One of which, oh, so let's start first with the academe. No, um, that I, I'm going to report that the academe is starting to gain interest with PWAs as what they're thinking it as a as an important skill or a piece of technology that the student learn. As an, ex as an example of this is that uh, recently at, I was invited at Technological Institu Institute of the Philippines, TIP, to deliver a talk about PWAs. So basically, the, the, the department head that told me that they want to equip their students with the skill and um, he thinks that PWA is, is just necessary in the coming years. No? So there. In industries, some of the examples are, first is the click shop by 7-Eleven, which I always promote as they bet full on PWAs, meaning they do not have a native app um, counterpart. They just have a PWA. So the good thing about this is that I get to order online. I just, it's like a normal e commerce site. But when I'm offline and I go to the 7 Eleven store to claim my package, it still works offline. So I could show the, the code to, to claim it. So that's one of the features that 7 Eleven leverages. And another one is Shop SM. Um, if you could, if you want to. Try shopsm.com. Um, you could try installing it, and it shows you like a splash screen, like we've got it all for you. So that's uh, one of the examples in retail. Um, and as I've mentioned, that I'm going to show you some fun examples. So, um, these are some of the personal projects that I've built. So we're going to demo it today, tonight. So the first is in transportation. The one I've said earlier is 
uh, this one. So one of the pain points when you're using native apps for things like transportation is that when you wanted to get the, the information fast, installing apps is a fiction. Meaning if, if it's a fiction, it adds additional steps, meaning that it's going to waste your time just to do simple tasks. So since it's a pain point, it's an opportunity for progressive web apps since um, you don't have to install anything. So that's what you could leverage. So one of the examples that uh, I have here is Project Trend. So this is a train tracker for LRT. Um, this is a project that came from our ideas before with Stephen when we joined hackathons. So basically, this is a train tracker for the LRT1. So let's say I'm going to ride the, like let's say I'm a foreigner. I don't speak Tagalog. I don't, I don't know what to ask. Uh, where is this station? And I just wanted to know, like, when should I get down the train, for example. So let's try utilizing this no install um, technology or this feature. So what I'm going to try is to install this. Let's say I'm going to write the LRT now. And I see the QR code posted somewhere in there. Just go and scan this and open this. Okay, and from there, it's loading. See that I could already use the PWA instead of installing it. So um, this increases the possibility that a user would use your app because they don't have to install it. Okay, so let's try. Okay, wait. So let's say the nearest station here is, for example, EDSA. Then let's try going to um, Monumento, for example. It's a little bit slow. And here, the cool thing about PWAs is that uh, we have different APIs available already. One of this is the geolocation API, and it could actually get your location real time. So it could track, let's zoom in so you could see. Okay. So it actually tracks your speed in real time. And also, um, one of the APIs said was the share something API. So I have it in here. So let's say I wanted to tell my friend or my Twitter followers where I am right now. So the only thing I have to do is instead of taking a screenshot or something, just, I just have to tap share, right? Okay. And then a share sheet would show. Then from there, I could, um, let's try to tweet this one. Okay, there. And from there, I could already tell that I just wanted to let you know that I am at EDSA, so you may also track and share at which exact official LRT1 station you're nearby with Project Trend. So from there, diba, it's fast. Okay. And th that link, actually, um, I've used Firebase, real-time database for that. So when a friend opens that, they could see in real time where I am. It's one of the cool things of this thing. Is Okay, let's proceed to the next example. Okay, so next are the food and beverage industry or QSRs or yung, like um, fast food chains. So this is not for fast food chain, but this is also fast. No, so one of the example is Quick Eats. Um, let's say I wanted to order a food, and I'm new to the area. I don't know where to buy, and I don't have Food Panda installed. So we can leverage this by actually allowing your users to just scan, open this, okay, and it loads fast. Okay, your favorite meals delivered quick, and it's a it's cute. It's a good thing we ate already. <laughs> okay, let's try signing in using our mobile number. Okay. So this 
is this uses uh, Globe Labs for the SMS system. Don't text me later. <laughs> okay. There, I'm already registered. So, while this happens, um, and I see that it already has value on, like, to my life. No, I could already install this in the background. And while that happens, I could already order. So let's try ordering one. So already no, knows where we're near, using the geolocation API, as I have told earlier. So OK, let's deliver here. So you could choose, OK, let's uh, order. OK, uh, what do you want to order? Right. Mm. OK, let's get one. OK. So let's order that. So like here is the rundown of your order, which is 250. So let's proceed to the payment. Okay, unfortunately. Um, as I've told you earlier, there's a payment request API. So it's supposed to work, but in, on, the, on this demo, it doesn't. But it should show a sheet below that you could put your credit card details, or if you have something stored, you could already tap pay. So you don't have to enter your credit card details every time. Um, you need to buy. So let's just try cash on delivery instead. And it's that fast. I didn't install anything. And yet, if ever I wanted to order again, I just open Quick Eats. That's where is it? Did it install? It's still installing. But if ever it installs, you can just open it and order again. Okay. Let's proceed to the next one oh, Museums and Galleries. So since it's the uh, National Arts Month, I have built a demo. This was the demo I built for the previous meetup with PWDO or Puedo. But I'm going to show it to you again if you haven't seen it. So let's say we wanted to go to the um, what's this? Uh, National Museum of Fine Arts. So we there's something I built that we could try out to discover the different art in there. So who wants to join me on this journey? Uh, uh, scan. You scan. Press that. Okay. Okay, wait. Malang. And then you press explore. You will tell me what that art is. You tell them, okay. Wait long. You wait for that. So it's still loading. This uses machine learning to detect the art. So let's say example. Can you try pointing at that one? Okay. So it tells us what the details. Let's say it's an upright panel, uh, intricately carved and highly decorated. Uh, its wooden frame contains ledges and panels behind and above the altar. See, there's an info already. <laughs> uh, can you tie this one on, though? Okay, there. Uh, this one on is like uh, the bust of Ricardo Canicero. So, there. And the last one is, can you try this one? Wait. There you go. Can you try that? What's that? What what art is that? Can you scan? Oh, there. It's the spoliarium. Can you try pressing learn more? Okay, there. And with that, no, it could show you rich information using PWAs and um, artificial intelligence. Um, this one uses TensorFlow.js to process the the information that it sees using the camera. So, thank you. How was it? Ayos lang, magaling. Stig ba? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, we could build cool things with PWAs today. Alright, okay. So, opportunities for progressive web apps aside from those cool ideas. So, for to give you the value proposition on why building one. So, it says there that 
the global PWA market is expected to reach a high number um, because um, emerging markets have low internet speeds. So it says in the article that with the rapid rise in the number of smartphone users, a significant amount of time is spent by users on apps. However, due to low internet speeds in developing countries, native apps aren't able to function smoothly. Um, progressive web apps take up very limited space and can run on low internet speeds as well as in offline mode. So these factors would drive global progressive web apps market exponentially. Um, media and entertainment represents the largest segment largely due to lower loading time, just like what you've seen earlier with the museum PWA. So yeah. So also, why would you design one? Because PWAs run on these uh, lesser capable phones and on super capable ones with different weird looking screens. So we have an API for this one which is new, which is the window segment API. So you would know where to put your contents. Let's say you have your Surface Neo or Duo. You would know how many screens are there and where to put your content. So yeah. And also, as what uh, Stephen said earlier, that um, on the average, a uh, user now installs just one native app per month, or even less than that, because of that high friction with installing them. Also, what you can target, since we don't have much PWAs, you could target these industries. Uh, media and entertainment, travel and tourism, just like the museum, uh, PWA, retail and e-commerce, just like that quick app. Uh, quick eats, uh, real estate, also education and in healthcare.